Hello, hello, folks. Welcome along. My name is Frankie. Join me back here on the Dairyman's Diary. Coming from Challenger Valley, as always. Uh, we're just doing a bit of a drive around. It is now late. Well, no, actually, middle of July. And we're, uh, we've got a busy day. It's a busy time at the moment for us. Uh, as you can see, the grass is ready to go for a second cut and also for a bit of hay that we're going to get on with early. Um, I mean, if you just look at this, some of these some of these fields that we have here are really quite thick at the moment. A lot of grass in there, so we need to get going. Uh, but we can't do that today. We're going to be firing up the harvesters uh, today. Uh, and we've got our winter barley is cracking along. It's looking very good. Some of our spring barley has shot up recently. Uh, I'm just going to have a look at that over here. I mean, it's still a long way off there, but it's uh, it's turning already. It's, it's nearly completely yellow. And it is looking really good. This field here is looking like one of the better crops of spring barley I've put in the ground in a long time. Um, yeah, very, very happy with that indeed. So hopefully that will continue to, to look uh, as good moving forward. Uh, we've got, like I say, a lot of hay ground to work on with as well. Our spring drilled crops on the new land out east are there. A little bit behind this, not quite as close, but there's a lot of hay ground over there. That we're going to make the field start by the river as well. We're going to make that into hay as well because it's just a good dry ground uh, and it gets a lot of sun. So it should, in theory, should make good hay quite quickly, which would be good. Uh, grassland up here as well is all ready to go. So, I mean, at the moment there, I'm looking at having to get some harvesting done. Uh, I have spring crops on the horizon. I've got a lot of uh, silage to, to not only bale and wrap, but also to mow and then rake. And I've also got, yeah, like I said, more spring crops over here that are looking as good again, really kicking along. So very, very good time of year at the moment. Uh, we're looking great. The cattle are looking really good and healthy there. Uh, they've been outside for quite a while now, so they're looking fantastic. Uh, so yeah we really need to get going so i think what we'll do is just go and pick up a tractor head up to uh farm two combine's already up there actually last night I got a bit impatient so i moved the combine header out uh that's by the field now so i'm ready to go just, uh drive the combine out hook up and away we go so that's gonna be pretty good to get going with that uh we're really pushing the barley first because at the moment not many people have been able to get going with barley around here it's been a bit slow Usually in this area, I've been told that you can usually see one or two people going in the first week of July. Uh, right now, it's the middle of July and there hasn't been a single soul going yet, uh, at least within the close proximity to where I am. So we're, we're going to get going. It isn't too bad. It's, uh, we now haven't checked the moisture meter there this morning uh, and we're coming in around uh, 14 and a half, which is actually very very good it's nice and dry today really nice uh, beautiful summer, summer's morning so that's great news for us it means that we don't have to worry about drying costs or anything because i'm essentially just tipping it onto a grain shed floor so in that case we can just essentially uh i'm trying to find the best premium that i can at the moment for the grain trader looking into that for me now and then the highest bidder will get it like i said it's a premium because there's a little bit of a shortage on barley uh so that will be sold and hopefully cleared out on the truck as quickly as possible so if that is indeed the case and i am quids in uh so we'll, yeah we'll see how that goes uh there's some bad weather coming well the long-term forecasts say that bad weather is coming next week so realistically uh we'll get the combine done the spring barley i'm worried could take a bit of a hammering to be honest uh it might not do well at all uh if the, if the weather is to be as bad as expected but uh, fingers crossed it's not or even it, it misses us but uh, it's always that time of the year when you know you spend Invested so much time, effort, and uh, resources into growing something, uh, only for it to get battered by the weather before you're ready to go. So if we can avoid that, that'd be ideal. But it's a, uh, like I say, we'll, we'll get done what we can. We'll get the spring barley done. The I've got the square baler hooked up. We can get that on the uh, straw probably tomorrow. We'll get it all harvested today, uh, and that can pick it all up tomorrow. That would just leave it on the deck to dry out for a bit. Uh, and then that will be good news and then yeah that's another job ticked off and then we'll look into mowing down some more grassland that grassland can then get uh can get bailed and wrapped or even thrown about and uh left on the deck to, to dry out there so there's a lot of different options there for us uh, we need to really get just get going with it all it's all seemingly coming at once i wonder if we might have to get into help to help get us on top but the the combining 
Winter Barley, we really don't have a great deal of it. Now, usually we just do feed barley, uh, so it'll go away to be processed into animal feed, uh, which is what this will be as well. But again, there's still a little bit of a premium on that because of the uh, shortages in the area. So, you know, we'll uh, we'll capitalize on those shortages where we can. Because uh, they won't be around for long with this kind of weather. Combines will be rolling very quickly. And when they are, then, you know, that's when you can say goodbye to any premiums because the, the, the supply shoots up pretty quickly. Uh, but the combine's still where we left it. The red grain trailer over there, the old, uh, uh, the old grain trailers over there. We're going to pick that one up. Then we'll just park it by the field. Then we'll, we'll get on on around here just fine, I think. Uh, but yeah, always like to get the combine out for the first time. Get into the field there and see how it's all going. It's all been serviced over. We know it's uh, mechanically it's working well. This is the first time we're using it, of course. So uh, it's exciting to get it into the field more than anything. Uh, and we will see, but as you can see, just everywhere, there's a lot of grass. It really, really is. But again, this field has surprised me. It, it didn't look that good when it was uh, early spring after its first application of uh, nitrogen on there. It, it wasn't looking the best. But it's, it's held its own. It's come through there, so good for it. Okay, we had a big uh, load of milk taken away this morning, uh, which has been good to see. That's uh, all looking very good. Milk quotas because, again, we're seeing a lot of milk production right now because the cattle are outside, because they're able to really benefit from this very good sweet grass that uh, the, the amount of sunlight we're seeing is producing. They're, they're doing sublimely well, which is fantastic. Okay, pick this guy up. Still a few puddles around here, incredibly. Uh, we've had, like, usually we, we had some good weather uh, probably in May. Which is a good time to get it really because at that point there you start to see the crops there you start to see the seeds being formed in the in the uh in the barley so that, that's been really good then it got a little bit of overcast still stayed warm though which is crucial a little bit of overcast there uh and then yeah that kind of slowed down the uh the ripening of all of the, the crops to be honest there and then uh yeah through june and uh, early june it was a bit the same and then Middle of June onwards there, we had a little bit of rain and then BAM with the with the heat came in, in July. So it's really kind of seen us through, uh, which has been good. Very, very good. So we'll just go and uh, stick this at the side of the field and we'll get ourselves away. It has been a while since uh, you have seen a video from me. I've just been a little bit too busy, really. Uh, we've been cracking on with a lot of things. Did a little bit of contract bailing, could you believe? Uh, put some um 60 deep bales out there uh, so some of the little quadrants there they went for a cost but just some uh they, they got them wrapped in the end uh, it was it was supposed to be hay but it just didn't get the best of conditions for that so they they decided against it and ultimately in the end uh, we we bailed it up and they got it wrapped so that was good um but yeah looking like a good strong crop this one very very happy with it uh, a lot of straw on it as well there does seem to be a lot of straw in these in the fields around here so uh those uh, dairy boys who need all the straw they'll be very happy there uh, hopefully if there's that much straw i'm hoping for um for the sake of everyone who's having to buy it that it does knock the price down a little bit there because good heavens some of the prices i've seen quoted have been very very scary indeed so fortunately we should we pretty much grow all of our cereal crops for straw and then whatever we make as long as we we cover our overheads and make a little bit of profit from the from the, the grain itself i'm not too concerned but i think we'll be good this year i think we'll be very good uh so that's why we want to try and capitalize on it where we can uh and get this old girl firing properly for the first time oh on the money all right then so i hope you're all doing very well do let us know in chat just I hope everything is going well with you. Uh, like I said, it's been a while since we were here. Let us know in the comments what's going on. If you're in harvesting or if you're still getting some hay in. But we don't need to make too much hay because we've still got a little bit kicking around from last year, actually. So we'll probably make half as much, but we will just make silage. Uh, get everything else wrapped up properly there. And, you know, we are increasing our numbers of cattle there. So we'll likely see more and more uh, usage for that. Uh, and as always there, the struggle to find more land is always ever present. So we'll be looking to see what we can do. Okay, so we're just going to roll over here. As I said, I got a bit impatient, so I dragged this out with the telehandler the other night. Uh, just to get it into position. <laughs> I didn't have to waste about five minutes this morning, really. Uh, but it, 
if I could have got away with uh, taking the nibbling a little bit off last night there, I would have. It just wasn't quite ready. By the time we got around to it there, it was about 18.5%. So we thought we'd leave it. Well, I thought I'd leave it just because, it, yeah, it's uh, not worth it. When I knew I'd be going it today there, we'd give it all, uh, give it the morning to burn off there. And to be honest, it's much warmer than I thought it would be. So it didn't take too long at all. All right, that looks like we're good. behind me there there we go i don't know whose ground that is over there is plowed but i never saw them plow that in the time i've been here and certainly nothing's been done with it since so it's a little bit weird uh, okay let's just get my bin lids open here there you go you can see some light coming into the hopper there that's fantastic All right, so just put the PTO shaft on there to the header, so we should be good there. I think we'll just start by firing up the thresher. That's the little yellow knob on the right of the two. So that is putting the separator into action. That's putting the feeder house into action. And that is putting the sieves uh, and the straw walkers all into gear. Uh, and the combine really does a little bit of a grunt when that one's going, but that is away. And then... And uh, there we go. All right then. The real speed doesn't look too bad there. Okay, let's just uh, right. We're off. Okie dokie then. So we'll just take it a little bit slow around this first headland here. Just so we get ourselves in there. Kind of gauge how uh, how thick this crop is going to be. So we're current clicking along at about 4k. Uh, no speed of these great big lexins these days. Or the, I saw an article about the John Deere X9, I think it is. I happen to believe. I think there's one actually working in the valley on the other side there. The huge big farm. Um, but I hope to try and see that in action some point this season. Yeah, they are pretty impressive beasts. But uh, yeah, this will do us fine. We have no finances on this at all. This is bought outright, so we don't have to worry about repayments or service fees or anything like that. There, it is ours for the foreseeable, and that's just the way I like it. Very little uh, trash in the bottom of this crop as well. Actually, looking very good. Nice, not too green at all. There's a few areas where the, I think earlier on in the in the. Probably actually in the late autumn there. I think the, the birds got into it. The pigeons did a bit of damage here maybe. Because it hasn't just... It just didn't grow through. Frankly. But uh, it will work that in. That's not the worst thing in the world there. It hasn't been too bad. Quite often you'll see they'll really just get after it. Uh, and we can just destroy whole sections of the of the field. But yeah, we're looking okay for now. now like I say, hopefully we'll get this field done. The one just on the other side of the, the, the pasture there. Uh, that's the only two that are ready for us that's all we have to do for now and then that'll be the combine done for probably about three weeks i would say maybe less of the way some of the spring barley is going uh but yeah we'll we'll see what we can look at into for that one and then i get the straw bailed up tomorrow and then after that straw is done uh we'll let that sit for a day because again we've got a few days grace here with the weather so we can let that sit in the field just to sweat out if it needs to if it shouldn't do it should be fine by the time we get to bail it uh but yeah we'll be looking good there and then it's on to the mowing again Busy, busy time as always. But yeah, I'd rather be busy than standing still. Okay. I think what we'll do, we'll just get ourselves cut into here, and then we'll just go and stop and see how the uh, how the straw's looking. Check our losses out the back. Just go and have a quick look to these, are we? Oh, okay. Yeah, like I say, not a bad looking swath of straw. Given that we're running on an 18 foot header here, it's not the biggest in the world, so it's, it's looking pretty darn good. Doesn't look like we've got too many losses in here either. 
Uh, losses are when we haven't quite got the sieve set up properly, so grain's actually getting blown up through the, the straw walkers and out the back, uh, which is not what you want to see. Two reasons. One, you're losing grain, but secondly, you're probably going to see that come through as volunteer barley into the wheat we'll put in here next year. So that's looking all right for me. Looking all right indeed. And doesn't the combine just look dandy? Oh, what a beast. What an absolute beast. All right, back in again we go. Put down the pressure under gear. There we go. Perfect stuff. Much easier in this combine than in my beloved little TX34. Sadly, no longer with us, obviously, because of many fires. But, uh, yeah, this is a much, obviously, a sign of the times, really, how this is developed. And the, the principle behind combines is obviously still the same. But, boy, is the technology used uh, to make it happen change significantly. And that is just it's so, so impressive to see. It really, really is. Now, we're looking all right in the back for uh, tank capacity, which is good. Uh, uh, fall too short there. Should get all the way around, I would imagine. Speeding in nicely. I think the real speed is looking pretty good. I need to as well. On the joystick here, I can adjust, obviously, the uh, the reel. So the height of the reel and how far out the reel is. So if I'm in obviously rape and I've got it lifted up higher, I can pull it even further out. That's the big black spin thing at the front. Uh, I can lift up the header. I can... Uh, I can also tilt the header a bit if I need to. I can bring out my auger, unload as well. And of course, I've got forward and backwards on the stick there as well. But yeah, look at the grass over there in that field. That looks superb. I really do want to get a good, strong second cut off of all of this. in there get myself around there you go a lot easier as well the old, old combine such a numb beast to get around those uh turns but this is uh yeah so much lighter and it's set to be a brilliant day here at challenton so we should have plenty to get going with today uh we'll bring you along for a ride to see how we're getting on there towards the end probably another video there see a bit of a review of what harvest looks like for these two fields for the winter barley at least uh and hope to get this shipped out nice and quickly as well that's the the ultimate goal here as soon as i can get this moved i want this off the floor so hopefully you should be expecting the call soon from the the uh, grain trader now the, the fortunate news as well i don't have to rely too much on uh testing the grain so i don't need to send it away to check for proteins or anything because it's not going for anything uh, special it is just going in to feed so we'll, we'll try and get the price that we will receive won't be as high as some others uh, you know, it's, uh, the premium won't be quite as good, but it'll still be a little bit more than I init initially would budget for. So, you, know, you can't sniff at that. So, we'll see how that goes. Uh, we'll get all the way around this headland, though, and then we'll we'll tip out into the trailer for the first time. And then that, uh, that will be us away for the rest of the day. All right, made it comfortably round, really. Uh, what have we got in the back there? Uh, I say comfortably. It might be getting a bit close to the, the, the bin lids. But, hey, we've made it. Uh, we'll spin around quickly. We'll just get this all emptied out. There's a couple of loads into that trailer before it's full, I should reckon. So I'll bring out the auger now. Oh, watch that. I want to hit the fence there and get like caught in. There you go. Uh, what we might do, actually, just give ourselves a bit more breathing space here. If we can fit it in, we'll just take off this little pass here. Shouldn't be a problem. Oh, right then, look at that.
Just need to figure out where we are and judge it properly. There you go. All right, then. And we'll just kill that. And that is us unloading the first lot. We're just going to have a look and see how that's looking. All right, so first load's in the box. Um, I don't think it's looking too bad at all. Lot in there. That's this, the topper on that combine is supposed to be about four and a half ton. Must be full than that thought because that's uh, over half this trailer here, and this is about a ten, maybe ten ton. But yeah, we're looking good. So with that, we're gonna crack on here, I reckon, uh, and we're gonna, gonna get this done as quickly as we can. For now, though, I'm gonna leave you here. So thank you ever so much for watching. I have been Frank. This has been a Dairyman's Diary, and this is the start of real silly season for us. There's a lot of work for us to get cracking on with, so we'll see how we get on. Until next time, though, thank you ever so much for watching. Do stay safe. I hope you have enjoyed. If you have, please do leave a comment down below. I'll try and get them as soon as I can uh, and read through them all as and when SFTN puts this live. And we'll see you all in the next one. Until then, do stay safe. Enjoy what you're doing as always, and we'll see you all in the next one. Catch you later.